All right, so we are back on the LS Swap Mustang again here. So what we're working on today is we just got in our HP Tuners MPVI-3. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is get it all hooked up, make sure we can talk to the PCM, make sure everything's working, go through the setup on that. I've never done it before, so it'll be a first for me. Um, and get that going, make sure we can get communication, then we'll go through and start changing stuff. All right, so I'm kind of going to go through this step by step. Uh, to show the setup, I was a little bit confused on how the whole setup and everything works with this, so we're going to do that here. What I've done, the MPVI 3 is plugged into the OBD2 port there that goes to the Chevy PCM. Uh, it does do Bluetooth, but I've got it connected with a USB cable going into the laptop. So now what I'm going to do, next thing you have to do, you go to the HP Tuners website, you download the VCM suite. Uh, now I'm going to go here to the VCM scanner to verify that it is seeing the PCM so if we open that then we go up here connect to vehicle and let it connect and there's connecting now it's connected and then I'm just gonna go up here and read the codes to verify that it is connecting read DTCs and there's all our codes that are showing up which are right mass airflow bunch of Transmission codes because there's no transmission, automatic transition anymore. Anyways, that's all our codes. So we'll get out of here. Then we'll open the VCM editor. And here is the VCM editor. Click right here. Read vehicle. We click gather info. It's gonna think for a second. And there we go. So that's our PCM, has the VIN number, shows the truck it came out of, 2003 Suburban, 5.3 liter V8, P59 ECM. So now we're gonna click read entire, and then read. And it's gonna read the PCM there. And we'll sit and let that do its thing. All right, so I just finished reading, uh, and it's immediately gonna pop up and ask us to save this. So I'm just going to save it as our base tune here. All right, so I went ahead and saved it. Just named it 5.3 base tune for this car. All right, so what was confusing to me is how the licensing works. So up to this point, uh, we have not had to license anything. We have not had to use any credits or license this file. We, download, we uh, read the stock tune, we saved it, it's not going to ask you to license a file until you go here and you click right vehicle and that's when you're going to get the pop-up you do not have a license for this file so if you're reading the file from your vehicle and then licensing that file it licenses the file and the vehicle at the same time because they the file and the vehicle have the same VIN number essentially is what that's saying so we're going to go ahead and license this file it will license the vehicle as the VIN numbers match and then at that point uh, I will be able to tune this vehicle an unlimited number of times you can write to it an un unlimited number of times uh, as long as you know you have the same VIN number, you're not swapping out PCMs or something weird like that. All right, so here is the screen that asks you to uh, apply your credits to your license your file. So it gives you two options here. Uh, the specific option just licenses this PCM, so that is the serial number of this PCM matches right there. Uh, the second option is unlimited licenses for all 2003 Chevy Suburbans. I don't need that. It's six credits. There's no reason I'm wasting credits on that. Uh, so I'm just going to do the specific version. So you can go here, purchase credits online. It's going to bring you to the HP Tuners website, purchase the credits, and then I'll come right back. So I went ahead and purchased two credits from the HP Tuners website. Now what you're going to have to do is go to help resync re interface, and it's going to connect to the HP Tuners server. And there it says resync complete. So now if we go back, uh, and the only thing I've changed on this is that it's a manual transmission instead of an automatic right now. But if we go right to vehicle, show license options, and right there it's going to show up. It's not grayed out anymore for the two credit option. So I'm going to click on the two credit option tied to the serial number of this PCM. We're going to click OK. It's going to say, are you sure this action cannot be undone? We're going to click yes. And write. So it's going to sit here and write to the PCM now. There it goes. And it just finished there. It cycles the fuel pump. That's how you know it's done. And it says write completed. So now we can close. 
So now you can edit this file and write it to your PCM on unlimited number of times, however many times you want, as long as you don't change your PCM or do something weird like that. Um, so that is how you get your tune file licensed. It was a little bit confusing to me. Hopefully that helps somebody understand how this setup works for the HP Tuners software. Um, so now I'm going to go through, start making some modifications, start uh, fixing some stuff, start telling it, you know, what's going on. We're going to apply an OS modification here. If we go up here to OS, we're going to be changing to a two bar map. So two bar will read up to 14 point something PSI uh, boost, which is more than we're going to run on this car. So we can go here, we can apply code modification, and then it's going to tell you how to do that there. I'm going to go through those steps right now and apply this operating system modification for the two bar map and go and do that. All right, so when you wanna apply the two bar map OS, you wanna be very careful, follow these directions. If you do not follow these directions, you can break your PCM and that will be a problem. So follow these directions exactly and you will be good to go. All right, so we went ahead and applied the OS modification, saved it with a new name, closed the file, opened the file again, and as you can see, I have open our 5.3 base tune two bar map is what I named it. Uh, and to verify that everything worked, we're gonna go to our engine tab here. We're gonna go to our general. We're gonna open the main VE table. And as you can see, the pressure now goes up to 210 KPA, which would be two bar. So that did work correctly. Uh, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and write it to the vehicle. Right, so here's the last step on the OS uh, modification. You're going to go to write it to your vehicle. Make sure you click write entire. Okay, you do not want to click write calibration. You can break your PCM that way. You want to click write entire when you do an OS modification. That way it moves everything back over. Uh, and then you can just do from there on out right calibration if you're just doing modifications to your tune from that point on. But make sure you click right and tire, click right, that way you do not break your PCM. Go ahead and click right, uh, it's writing, we're gonna go ahead, let it sit, do not touch anything while it's doing this, do not turn the car off, do not do anything, let it write, and then we'll come back when it's done. I went ahead and finished, as you can see, write complete, so we're gonna go ahead and close, and then I'm gonna start going through and fixing problems, so we already fixed one, manual transmission, uh, so all of this now doesn't mean anything. That's all for an automatic. Uh, we're going to go through the engine diagnostics, see what codes we're getting. I'm also going to have to switch out the map sensor now for the two-bar map. So it's got the one bar in there now, so we'll switch that out. Uh, make sure that is reading correctly and keep going from there. All right, so a couple things I'm going to do. Uh, we went into system. I turned the VATS control off. Uh, I had disabled it on this PCM by doing some weird finagling with the body control module on another truck and it just disables it. Uh, but this is the right way to do it. So you go to security, disable your VATS. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to go to engine, no, not engine diagnostic, engine. And we're going to go to idle, our base set point here. And we're going to bump the idle up a couple hundred RPM because it is just too low for a manual transmission. So we're going to do 200 RPM for now, uh, add, and then it goes ahead and bumps all those up from what they were by 100. Um, so there's that. So it's it's related to coolant temp. So operating temperature is right here, about 219, one, this range of 750 RPM, that's a good idle to me. Uh, it was real low, it was like 500 before. So we'll do that, uh, save it as a new file because I want to keep this stock base tune file and we're gonna save it here as tuned two bar map because this is the file we'll be doing the tuning to we'll save that and then we will write vehicle and just do the standard write calibration this time and it's gonna do its thing write the calibration I think what I'm going to work on after this is getting the electric fan set up. Um, so there is, if you go into the system here, when this is done writing, there's options for electric fans because these Suburbans came, some of them came with electric fans. This one didn't, but we can enable that. And basically, instead of enabling the fan relay with the key, like I had it set up before, or the fuel pump, uh, it'll turn on based on coolant temperature of the engine, which is what I want. So I'll get going on that next. Get that hooked up and we'll just uh, go through all the codes, make sure there's no abnormal codes, 
popping up uh, engine codes make sure the two bar maps working and go through all that I know this video is kind of slow and it's just sitting in front of a computer but um, this has to be done so I'm gonna get going on that and see how it goes all right so we're swapping out the map sensor took the old one out this is the new two bar map sensor uh, there's a part number here if it will focus come on there's a part number right there this is an AC Delco uh, they are pricey I think this is like 80 bucks or something. They are expensive, they don't even come with the boot. That's why it's got a used little boot on it. Uh, but it's important to have a good map sensor when you're running boost. That's kind of very important for it to know what is going on with the boost. So there's that, plugs into the stock sensor. We'll pop that in there. And then I'll go back to the computer and make sure it's reading correctly. It should be reading atmospheric pressure right now with the engine off. So we'll check that. Uh, that will confirm that the two bar OS is working correctly and we'll get going after that. So I went ahead and opened up the scanner connected to the vehicle. It's reading 103 kPa which is about 14 psi which is close to atmospheric pressure so our OS modification is working. Our map sensor is reading correctly. Alright so the weather is just awesome outside but we're gonna keep going in here. Um, I ran into a problem. We raised the idle up. I started it up and then it would not let me rev up past like 1600 rpm uh, The problem was in both the transmission and the engine section if you go to torque management Abuse mode you want to disable that for the transmission side so that says disabled and then you want to go over here to your engine There's another section if you go to torque management on your engine side and go to abuse the RPM here was set to 1600 RPM and as soon as it would hit 1600 RPM it would cut all the fuel and it would basically die. So I just set that to 8000 RPM, uh, we'll never hit 8000 RPM hopefully, but uh, change those two things, rode it to the vehicle, now it revs up fine. So now as you can see, start it up, no RPM restrictions at all anymore so it revs up fine. Uh, next thing I'm going to work on was going to be the fans but it's now raining so it's probably not going to be the fans i'll probably just mess around uh look around see what i can find in here and go from there all right so we're back on the ls swap mustang again here i uh, was messing with the tune stuff trying to get the electric fans working and while messing with that uh the car was running for a while we were trying to figure some stuff out it kept blowing this fuse on this relay that I put to the electric fan. So this is a relay with a 40 amp fuse. Here's the fuse that was in it before. It's actually melting the fuses and then they blow. Um, you can see this one is in there crooked. It's not in there crooked because it's supposed to be. It's melting. You can see the housing is melting. So it's all just bad. Uh, not a big enough fuse for this system and relay. I think this is a relay is only rated for 40 amps anyway. So what we're going to be doing ripping this relay out we'll be replacing it with this 80 amp relay so you can see the size difference there and this is just the relay no fuse we're using this as a fuse this is a 60 amp resettable waterproof fuse here so if it does blow for whatever reason you don't have a spare fuse to put in it and you're out somewhere you can just reset it and hopefully it'll get you home uh, but that's what i'm doing now so i'm going to cut this guy out this green is our positive to the fan this black's just the ground for the relay it gets power from this main uh, battery cable that goes to the back so we'll just come off of here go into this resettable fuse which i'm out probably here somewhere into the relay and then back to the fan so we'll get that all wired up and then we'll go back into the software now that we know that this is all working correctly uh and not going to keep blowing fuses because that was making it hard to figure out what was going on and then we'll mess with it in the software and see if we can get it to work correctly all right so we got it wired up you can see the main power comes over into the resettable relay comes out, goes into here, out to the fan, and then these are our two trigger wires, so this gets 12 volts when the key is on. And then this is the ground, right now I just have it grounded to a ground to make sure it works. So I turn the key on, fan comes on. Now we're going to hook this up to the PCM ground for the fan control, and see if we can get that to work through the software to turn the fans on and off. 
All right, so I'm working on the electric fans, and what I did is I went here, system fans, and I set this desired percent versus ECT. I set everything to 100%. I don't know what if that actually does anything for us, uh, but then I have it set up uh, two fans. I have the fan one wire hooked to our relay that we added, and then I set it to come on at 180, off at 170. Um, I might mess around with those numbers so it's not running so much, but that is just my initial test and I have it running here. ECT's up to 142 right there, 144. Fans are off, so we're gonna let it run. Let it get up to 180, and as soon as it hits 180, that fan should kick on right there. working correctly uh, I'm sure I'll have to play around with those numbers 180 is probably too low for this thermostat it's still got the stock thermostat in it uh, but that was just to verify that it's working correctly and it does seem to be working correctly so uh, we're gonna keep going from there I'm gonna clean up this wiring mount that relay and that's probably going to be it for today all right so fan wiring is completely done this time uh, relays mounted down there where the old one was Everything's wired up, everything's cleaned up. We tested it, it works. Uh, that is gonna be it for today. Next time we're gonna be working on fuel injectors, decapping the stock injectors, uh, putting a higher flow pump in the tank, and then we can start really tuning it and get going on that. But uh, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you can see the next parts coming, and I will see you next time.